We have checked the tape of the Dolphins' 70-point offensive performance in Week 3 against the Denver Broncos. What stood out on the coach's film? Glad you asked. We're going into that here today on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, my Yemi. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It's your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I am your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co host of Locked On NFL Scouting. You find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Appreciate our everydayers who are plugged in because it is your team every day. We don't just say it, we live it here on the Locked On Network. Today on the show, check the tape. A lot of fun. It's a lot of fun when you punt once and score 70 points and score 10 touchdowns. <laughs> uh, the Dolphins' offensive performance from Week 3 against the Denver Broncos. Got a hold of Coach's tape, went through, watched the whole thing, made my own observations, have my own observations. We're going to talk about it here today on the show. It's in the ticker down here at the bottom, okay? But we'll put the disclaimer out for those who are not on the YouTube channel. Imagine not subscribing to Locked on Dolphins' YouTube channel. Due to broadcast and copyright restrictions, we cannot share the actual game film or footage or all 22 on the stream. However, if you were interested in seeing my observations and notes and some film to back it up, you might want to consider the Locked On Dolphin subtext. You could text 305-409-3924 to join the subtext. You get the first two weeks free. Find out if you like it, if it's for you. If you like it, it's a couple bucks a month. If not, you cancel at any point in the first two weeks. No questions asked. That's Dolphins to 305-419-3924. And in there, you get the Locked On Dolphins subtext group community as well, which is where I dump all of my film notes. So just put it out there, okay? But I will do my best uh, to kind of walk you guys through the observations audibly and visually with the Always Sunny in Philadelphia crazy hand signals um, if you're on the YouTube channel. Uh, first thing I wanted to go over was participation in this football game for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, there was two players who played every snap. And if I told you their names, you probably would not be surprised who they are because they're the players who need the work. Uh, Isaiah Wynn, transitioning from tackle to guard for the first time in the NFL, played all 73 snaps for the Dolphins. Austin Jackson, at right tackle, played all 73 snaps for the Dolphins. Robert Hunt played 61. Tua Tungvaloa played 58. Teron Armstead played 56. Connor Williams played 43. He did go out with a groin injury uh, shortly after halftime on a, uh, it was one of the big Devon A. Chain runs. Uh, the one that is the meme that's going around where there's uh, about nine of the 11 Denver Broncos on the field who are planking, lying flat on their sides or on their back, and A. Chain is tearing down the sideline. That play. Connor gets out into space and it looks like he kind of steps weird. He kind of has to step around the blocker and you could see him kind of pull up and go down. Now, the good news is Mike McDaniel said on his Monday press availability that both Connor Williams and Jalen Phillips, uh, Jalen Phillips has a uh, an oblique. Connor Williams has a groin. They're both quote unquote day to day. I think that bids particularly well for their availability in week four against the, the uh, Buffalo Bills. From a skill player perspective, uh, Julian Hill played 57 snaps offensively. There was good and there was bad. I think there was more good than bad. Uh, but there was good, there was bad. I, I was really impressed with how he handled the physicality of this game, this prospect of blocking these edges uh, for the Denver Broncos. Robbie Chosen played 42 snaps. Tyreek Hill played 39. Braxton Berrios and Raheem Mostert both played 37. Cedric Wilson played 34. Devon A. Chain, A. Chan. We're, we're changing it again, I believe. I saw this from Adam Schefter. Uh, he played 30 snaps. Smythe played 26. Ingle played 25. Craycraft before the shoulder injury. That one sounds like it's a little bit more serious. He played 25. Uh, Chris Brooks played 13. So he kind of had this smorgasbord of like everybody on the roster got a little run, which was, was fun. It was fun to see and evaluate kind of like a preseason game, which is kind of messed up to say, but then again, like you scored 70 points. So in the fourth quarter, when the Dolphins take all their starters out, no matter what the fake accounts on the internet would tell you about the opinions of NFL owners, it's not real. It's not a real tweet. 
um, the Dolphins did not run up the score because they ran the ball a ton with their backups in and, put, and called off the dogs quite earlier than when the final gun sounded. But from a, a participation standpoint, the two guys that played all the snaps, Isaiah Wynn and Austin Jackson, I think Wynn was a little bit more up and down. Um, Austin Jackson was really good. He, he was really good in the run game. As far as the execution of blocks, now, was he always the stickiest in space? No, but the range is outstanding. I thought there were a number of zone runs that the Dolphins ran where Austin Jackson did an outstanding job of securing the A-level of the defense and cutting off inside leverage defenders on the backside while leaving the M.A. on the line of scrimmage unblocked because the flow is speed to the perimeter away from that side of the formation. I thought Austin Jackson's execution in the run game really stood out as, as a plus asset. And there was nothing in this game that I would come away with in spite of the return of Teron Armstead. That would have me say that, that I Kendall lamb needs to take that right tackle job for another week. And Mike McDaniel was asked about that last week and, and he said, we can't be complacent, but we, um, we're going to let the performance on the field dictate that Austin Jackson performed. Well, I think Isaiah Wynn had one play, on the third possession, it was the first down play, which the Dolphins lost five yards on the play. He ate an early penetration from, I think it was DJ Jones for the Broncos, that forced penetration into the backfield, and that waterlogged Julian Hill, and then Raheem Mostert's got to bubble eight yards in the backfield and try and get back up, up the sideline, and they lost five yards on the play. Now they got a first down on second and 15 because that's what this offense is capable of doing. But plays like that... And there was another play where he kind of got shucked off to the side and lost his balance uh, for Isaiah Wynn. There's, so there's still some ups and downs. There's room for improvement. And I think from Austin Jackson's perspective, uh, the execution on protection, uh, the Dolphins' pocket was was strong. Now, there were some times where, again, the strike timing and the placement and making sure we've got tight hands, those continue to be areas of growth. But, but you you have a functional offensive tackle right now which is not something we can say for Austin Jackson for quite some time. So I think it's an excellent development for the team. As far as Julian Hill, some really physical split flow fits, uh, blocking on the perimeter, uh, stepping down on defensive ends. You know, Denver was a group that you came into the game and you know between Gregory and Nick Modito and Cooper and uh, Frank Clark not playing. They had a lot of light bodies on the edge, and it showed. And I thought Julian Hill uh, did a really nice job with the physicality of it. Uh, there were some of the cut blocks in split flow where he was olayed fairly quickly, but even then, with the speed that the Dolphins have in the backfield, you saw the ability to create enough of a bubble and, and widen those defenders enough for those backs to still hit that, that gap and come downhill hard. Uh, Lee Meikenberg played 30 snaps at center in lieu of uh, Connor Williams after he went down with the injury. There were some snap inconsistencies. I didn't think it was egregious. I didn't think the penalty that he was called for was egregious either. Uh, you know, he he kind of came in, in a tough spot because A-Chain rips that run down into the short or the low red zone. And it's like, oh, hey, welcome to the game. We're inside the five, and we, we have uh, a short yardage opportunity to convert for a touchdown. And uh, they end up running it in on fourth down. They go for it on fourth down. There was a target to Julian Hill in the left corner of the end zone uh, that Hill didn't get his eyes back around. The ball came out fairly quick from Tua. Uh, this was also when we tried the back shoulder throw to Tyreek on third down, where him and Braxton were kind of in the same area. Uh, but I thought Liam handled the short yardage physicality pretty good. As far as the offensive line, like your, your usual performers, it's Robert Hunt, man. Outstanding. Tron Armstead, he had an outstanding rep against wide nine Jonathan Cooper very early in the game in which he very quickly meets him in space. So he takes all the air out of that rush and then uses an inside club to drop Cooper's inside hand down and then snatches him and puts him down on the ground. And it was like, okay, welcome back to Ron. Like, you're officially back. I have more thoughts on the running game, and I want to get into that with segment three because 
the Dolphins obviously rushed for 350 yards in this game. And how they did it and how they accomplished it was not a small feat. And I want to go in depth on that. But before we go any further on today's show, you do not have to choose between better hair and your health. Nutrafol provides a whole body, full health approach for men that promotes healthier hair with no drugs, no compromises, just better hair. Men think losing their hair is inevitable. Take control of your hair's future with Nutrafol, science backed hair growth supplement for men. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol's hair growth supplements use physician formulated natural science backed ingredients and their drug free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health either. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth by from within by targeting root causes of thinning, such as stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism through whole body health. Take the first step to visibly thicker hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter promo code locked on NFL. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter promo code locked on NFL. Nutrafol.com slash men promo code locked on NFL. As far as the passing game goes, the talking points around the passing game, Tyreek Hill kind of did what he wanted to do throughout the course of this game. Contested catches, shots down the field, <laughs> deep outs from speed motion, wrap-ins, you name it, okay? At the end of the day, what makes this offense so challenging is there is a numbers proposition that you as a defense have to confront. What do you want to do? Do you want to play coverage? Do you want to play overly attentive coverage to one or two players? Jalen Waddle didn't play in the game. And if you do, now you're putting yourself at a disadvantage for the box counts. And the Broncos... Uh, they, they tried to play some quarter, quarter, half and some cover six and, and tried to run split field coverages and disrupt route release timings and still have a safety over the top. The touchdown, the first touchdown, the 54 yarder to Tyreek uh, was a post or a slant uh, from Tyreek on the backside of the formation. And that was the cover two side. And to the front side of the formation, Robbie Chosen runs a wrap in, like a dig, to the quarter side. And when you run that wrap in, and that is a money route for the Dolphins. If you're running quarters to that side, that quarter safety is going to see that wrap in. And he knows my corner has outside leverage. It's my responsibility to get down and cut that route. And you see the safety 31. When Robbie Chosen runs the, the wrap in, he drives downhill on that throw hard. And protection's good. So Tua, he starts to the wrap in. He sees that it's quarters. He understands that the route is capped. And then he flips his eyes to the backside. And Tyreek's kind of throttled down a little bit in that space. But there's a second-level defender that could potentially contest that throw. So Tyreek flows, and he sees that the safety's driven. And the, the half field safety that's to the cover two side, Tyreek's Hill side, has backpedaled to, uh, I don't know, Athens, Georgia. He is out of here. He's flying out of here. He has the fear of Tyreek Hill and his vertical speed all over the film. He backpedals out of the frame on the all 22. So they have a cloud corner up who is contacting in the contact window and you sit underneath of him, and you disrupt the timing, and it did successfully disrupt the timing because when Tua moves his eyes from right to left, the timing is off for me to not just rip that throw right away. But that corner doesn't sink straight back. He sinks on an angle towards the sideline. So when Tyree kills post, skinny post, whatever it is, whatever you want, class fight, glance, whatever, trickles over top of the wrap in from the front side of the formation, 
that safety is 25 yards off and behind the play already, and Tyreek just kind of floats and carries it. And Tua feels it, Tyreek feels it, and he lays this throw out over the top. There's a really good embodiment of like, even just Tyreek Hill, talk all you want about Jalen Wild not playing the game. Tyreek Hill as a, a math changer in the game of football, that's the embodiment of it. Now, that was one of the plays throughout the course of the game in which Tua had a chance to work through his progressions and, and really make a big play happen. But operating inside a structure, you want to play quarters coverage, and Tyree Kill is at times to the quarter side, and you've got two deep quarters players that have to respect your vertical speed. Take the second and 15 conversion after Raheem Mostert on the third possession gets ran backwards because Isaiah Wynn gives up penetration up the field. Two is in the shotgun, and he takes a shuffle one footwork, which means I catch the ball, I kind of open my hips, I take one step back with my right foot or his left foot, my cleats are in the ground, and I'm ready to throw. And as soon as that right foot hits the ground, the ball is out against quarters coverage to that half of the field, shuffle one gun footwork for a route that hits 15 yards down the field. It happens so fast that you, you simply cannot just say, oh, well, drive on the throw. You can't because of Tyree Kill's vertical speed and Tua's footwork, whether it's play action pass, three step, back foot hits the ground, ball is out. Shuffle one gun footwork, flip my hips open, one foot's back, I'm loaded on my back leg, boom, the ball comes out, drive the throw. And he just they just throttle down in space. They're not running routes, they're feeling space. So for all of the I, I for all of the credit that Mike McDaniel deserves, for all of the credit that Tyree Kill deserves, for all the credit that Jalen Waddle deserves. The element of this with Tua is the processing of space. He's become so much more effective in diagnosing coverages pre-snap than what he was when he first came into the league. That the timing, and I know Boomer Asai's in Compton, the Joe Montana on the TV broadcast, and we're like a ways away from that, right? Like, <laughs> Joe Montana is an all-time great. Tua is a fourth-year player. But you're seeing these flashes of like, that's what the 49ers true West Coast offense with Bill Walsh originally was. I remember reading, I have the book over here on my shelf, and it's it's the Phil Sims book. Was it Take Your Eye Off the Ball? Is that what it is? Whatever Phil Phil Sims wrote a book. I'll I'll double check and I'll put it out on social at grinding the tape. And he talked about he did like a pro day workout for Bill Walsh. And he's all gunned up to do this pro day workout and he's ripping the ball. And Bill's like, no, like it's almost like the scene from Forgetting Sarah Marshall where he's learning how to surf. He says, no, you gotta, you gotta do less. You gotta do, do less, do less. And it's more about feel and rhythm and timing. And for the Dolphins, it, it really is kind of this the offense right now feels like this hybrid of like Bill Walsh timing West Coast offense that's been remodeled and repurposed for the modern game with an ability to tack levels of the field that you simply weren't able to do at that time. Mixed with the Shanahan wide zone coaching tree that we know Mike McDaniel uh, ha has come up through throughout the course of his coaching. It's this fascinating hybrid and you're, you're watching the footwork and it makes so much sense because as I'm listening to Daryl Bevel talk at training camp, and I'm listening to Tua talk, and I'm listening to Mike McDaniel talk, and I'm listening to Frank Smith talk, for the last year and a half now, they're talking about timing. They're talking about marrying the routes and the timing of the routes to marrying the timing of the drop of the quarterback and why it's so important. And it, it you're seeing all of the pieces of this puzzle fitting together right now. And I can't guarantee it's going to last all season long. But I can tell you for the last three games, it's absolutely there. And watching this performance with what Denver was trying to do, I, I guess trying to do, against this passing offense, it was just such a revelation 
for me personally to put all the pieces of all the information that we've collected over the course of the last year and a half together and put put it in a way that I could describe. That's the challenge when you face the Dolphins right now. Is there's like this Bill Walsh West Coast offense timing element in new ways married with some really, really impressive run schemes. And you have skill players that accentuate that. You have an offense who accentuates that. You have a quarterback whose strengths accentuate that all in one, one place. It's really, really fun. Uh, we're going to talk about the run game. Talking about the Speaking of the run game, we're going to talk about that next on this episode of Locked on Dolphins, so make sure you stick with us. Snap into NFL action this season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $200 in bonus bets, win or lose with FanDuel. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including the spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So if you can't tell, I'm a little jazzed up. <laughs> and as a reminder, um, due to, I, I will do the disclaimer again, due to copyright and broadcast restrictions, we are not permitted to share actual game film footage or all 22 on the stream on the YouTube channel. I hope you guys are enjoying the walk that we are taking through these offensive film note observations regardless. Now, if you are interested in seeing what some of this looks like, you could text Dolphins to 305-419-3924. Locked on Dolphins subtext community, chance to have a direct chat line, text line with me. You also get access to the Locked on Dolphins subtext community, which is where some of these film clips with my observations uh, can be housed and found and interacted with. And you can ask questions and so on and so forth. So that's... Hope that uh, the, if you're a visual learner, that may help. As far as the running game, um, the Broncos just didn't have an answer. They didn't know what to do. They, you, you'd think this team never saw toss crack before in their life. I think the Dolphins ran it five times on their first two possessions, and I don't think it gained less than eight yards uh, on any of them. So toss crack, wide receiver to condense split, is responsible for stepping down on the edge defender on the line of scrimmage. The Dolphins get this with a lead player, whether it's a split flow player, uh, a speed motion player, Alec Engel in the backfield, and then the offensive tackle wraps around the wide receiver that is blocking the MA on the line of scrimmage, and he gets up into the D gap and fits on a second level defender. Any offensive lineman that is not blocking back on this is responsible for climbing up to the second level and getting on linebackers. Do you sell the Dolphins leave the end man on the line of scrimmage on the backside unblocked because that player is really not going to chase it down unless he's a special, 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 special player and you win on the front side. Didn't happen. The first one they ran, toss crack, was good. The second one was a big gainer and you saw Teron Armstead, Connor Williams, you saw Austin Jackson all get up onto second level defender blocks and fit them perfectly. So when we've talked in the past about this Dolphins running game and how it's a block away from a really explosive play and it feels like it's right there, but you lose a critical block on the front side or a player gets knocked back and it bubbles everybody up and the run doesn't hit the way that it's supposed to. That didn't happen in this game. And what you saw the Dolphins were able to do to kind of piggyback off of that that I thought was really impressive was they run toss crack, toss crack, toss crack. And then they come back and they, they run inside zone toss to emulate the same motion as the toss crack. But the blocking on the edges is a little different. Now, it's still inside zone, so everybody still steps to the same direction in between the tackles. And you saw linebacker Josie Jewell had a very unfun time on Sunday. So they're running toss crack and they're getting outside and the linebackers can't run it down. And I know that was a talking point when we had on Friday. We said, you got to be able to block on the edges because we don't trust these linebackers' ability to flow sideline to sideline. And the Denver Broncos edge players are small. Well, sure enough, that's what happened. 
Well, Josie Jewell's sick and tired of getting run to the sideline and being behind the play and getting an offensive lineman in his lap. So he sees toss. All he sees is toss. <laughs> and he goes eight yards outside. But it's inside zone. It's just toss action that shows you, hey, we're running toss crack again. We're not. We're actually running inside zone. So Alec Ingold takes two steps to his left in the same direction as the toss, Raheem Mostert. So boop, boop, two steps off to the left. And then they peel back and they get north in a hurry. And it's like the seas parting. There's nobody there. There's nobody to block because now all of a sudden the right tackle is not blocking up onto the linebacker and chasing the man on line of scrimmage to seal the backside of the formation. And there's only one linebacker here and he's running out because he thinks this run's going to hit outside just like all the other runs. And instead it hits north. And I thought it was just like this really great, we're having success doing this, having success doing this. Let's sew and intertwine across to go with the jab. So we're going to jab, 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 boom, cross. And you're expecting jab. And you're tired of getting punched in the face. So you try to be overreactive against the jab. And we catch you with the cross. And it's another big gainer. And um, that's Mike McDaniel in a nutshell. I think that's what Mike McDaniel is doing as good as any head coach in the any, any offensive play caller. Never mind how good of a head coach he is. Any any offensive play caller across the NFL right now. That is what the Dolphins are doing as good as anyone. They have core play, foundational play, and then we have our counters off of that. It's your money concepts and against Denver, toss crack was the money concept because they ran it a ton. And Denver couldn't stop it. And Devon A. Chain rips one up the left sideline, running, surprise, toss crack. <laughs> and you're seeing Braxton Berrios, and um, I thought Cedric Wilson did a nice job in this game with, with blocking. And you see River Craycraft before he got shaken up. These guys are all blocking defensive ends, coming down and sealing to let the speed hit the perimeter. And it just really makes it challenging. I think the other thing that Miami did, just as a final thought, you saw a lot of 21 personnel, two back, but the two backs were uh, Devon A. Chain and Raheem Oster. And seeing them have the success that they did out of that 21 personnel uh, is something that um, we should continue to keep an eye on because I think that has a chance to be a really, really explosive personnel package for the Dolphins. That is going to do it for us on this episode of Locked On Dolphins. We have defensive all 22 recap coming your way shortly. I appreciate you guys checking out the show. It is your team every day. Fins up. Make it a good one. I'll talk to you all again soon.